Well, hello everyone. My name is Pauline Haycock and I'm the celebrant here at Rainers. And before we get started, I'd like to ask, if you have a cell phone, would you please be so kind as to turn off your ringer for the duration of the service? That would be much appreciated. And uh, we are going to be taking Doris to lay her to rest at Brookside Cemetery immediately following the service, and then we'll be right back. So you're welcome to join us there if you like, but we won't be long, and we'll be back, and we'll have refreshments with everybody gathered together uh, after that. So at this time, I'd like to ask you to please rise as the family comes to join us. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. And Lord, we know that all life is precious to you, and so we thank you for Doris. We thank you for the time that you gave her and the blessing and the joy that she was to so many that knew her. And Lord, we know that saying goodbye is not a one-time action, but something that occurs gradually over time. And so I ask that you would continue to be with this family after today's service as they walk this path of loss and grief. Please give them the courage and the humility to seek and find you. And Lord, I ask that you would comfort Doris's family, and may they be encouraged as we spend this time together today. And now we will pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, on behalf of the family, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to today's service, and I thank you for being here to support them. And family, I'd like to thank you for having me today here. What a privilege it has been to learn about Doris and to prepare this service. I have had a, a great week. So today, today, as we have gathered together to celebrate the life of Doris Joanna McCarley, it is with mixed emotions. Sadness for the loss of a mother, an Oma, a friend, and a neighbor, but a measure of relief that her suffering is over. It is safe to say that each one of you here has been influenced by Doris in some way. You've had the opportunity to hear her laugh, or maybe you shared in some of her homemade sweets and a cup of coffee. And I'm wondering if her waterman is here today, because I hear that she always made sure he had some of that. Or if you've gained some wisdom from spending time with her. Just listen to this tribute from niece Melissa. I, when I read this on the website, I knew I was going to share it today. My favorite memories of Aunt Doris involve a deck of cards. Most people would tire of playing cards before I did, but not Doris. Once she convinced me that we should play crib for money, 10 cents a point. She beat me pretty badly, and I was devastated. Of course, she told me I didn't actually have to pay, but a lesson was learned, 
and I have never played cards for money since, even 30 years later. What a great tribute. I loved that. I thought that was great. That's how aunties should be teaching and doing things with their nieces and nephews. So often we think of our parents as just dad, mom, grandma, grandpa. We measure them from our own experience with them, and we forget that they have lived lives outside of us. My husband often used to say to our children when they thought they were being clever, before there was you, there was me. And that's true. We forget about our parents having had lives without us. We forget that before us, they were once young with hopes and dreams and aspirations. And I like how this poem by a man named Dick Underwood says, says it. Mother, you were just a girl so many years ago. You had your loves and had your dreams. You watched us come and go. You watched us make the same mistakes that you had made before, but that just made you hold us tight and love us all the more. We haven't always thought about the things that you have seen. To us, you've just been mother, no thoughts of who you've been. But we remember now in love your life from start to end, and we're just glad we knew you as mother and as friend. And I thought that was very appropriate today, and, and I am delighted to serve this family today because they are big contributors to this service. And so I want to ask those fiddle players to come, please. I'm sorry I didn't ask your name ahead of time. Wow, that was amazing. 
I've been officiating almost 15 years and I can only think of two times, including today, where family have come up and done something that special. So thank you. We're gonna hear from them again. Canadian author Zeta Elliott said, I'm not sure which matters more, where the seed comes from or where it takes root and grows. So even though Doris was from the municipality of Enningen, did I say that right? You think? At the foot of the Swabian Alps near Stuttgart, I could do that one, her roots were planted deep in the soil of the Peace River country. And just like many of us here, Doris's roots, wherever she lived, were wrapped around family and friends. Doris's life story is filled with adventure and hard work. And so I thought it would be appropriate to share two quotes about hard work today. The first one is from Ann Landers, that lady of advice from years gone by. Opportunities are usually di di disguised as hard work, so most people don't recognize them. I think that's true. And this is my favorite one. Chop your wood and it will warm you twice. She was a wood chopper, I heard. She chopped a lot of wood. And so I knew I should be sharing that, that quote today. So I'm going to ask Alyssa to come, granddaughter Alyssa, to come and share the eulogy with us now. Family and dear friends, we gather here today with heavy hearts and to share our many memories as we remember my grandma, Dor Doris McCarley. It is impossible to capture a lifetime of love in just a few moments, but I will do my best. Doris was born in St. Wolfgang, a small municipal district of Erding in Bavaria, Germany on December 5th, 1945. She was a remarkable woman, the kind of person whose laughter could fill a room. She was as strong as they come. Doris was born small and was called a miracle baby as she was not expected to survive. Defeating the odds became a regular occurrence for Doris. When she was young, she severely injured her knee during a gymnastics exercise, and she also contracted meningitis. In her early 30s, she suffered irreparable hearing damage due to undiagnosed high blood pressure. None of these events ever slowed her down in life. Doris never had a chance to know her father, as he was listed MIA during the Battle of Berlin, but she lived a long life with her mother, whom many of us know as Oma. Doris's life in Germany was challenging as Oma was a single working mother. Oma moved to Canada to live with a Canadian farmer whom she had been sending letters to. In October of 1960, Oma married Walter Teche and moved to the farm in the Judah district near Peace River. Doris instantly gained not one, not two, but five new siblings, Eugene, Marion, Richard, John, and Joe. When Doris was 21 years old, she began writing letters to a Scottish stranger working as a sheep farmer in the Falkland Islands. Despite our memories of our grandpa often being gruff, the letters were allegedly very romantic, and he fascinated her for a few months with his written words before he unexpectedly came to see her. They met in person one time, and then he sent her a ring by train. The meeting must have gone well, as they were married on March 16, 1967, in Peace River, and together moved to Dawson Creek. Together, Doris and Bill raised four children, Mike, Billy, Rob, and my mother, Jennifer. Doris loved to tell stories and often shared how the boys would fight like cats and dogs. She recalled one incident where, Billy return, where Bill returned home from work to find my grandmother spraying the boys with a hose in the front yard, trying to get them to stop fighting. In 1984, Doris's stepfather passed away and Oma later moved to Dawson Creek to a quarter section near Progress to be closer to Doris. Doris and Bill moved out to the farm as Oma never learned how to drive. Although different than her life in Germany, Doris always enjoyed farm life, and she will always be remembered for her work ethic and strength, in spite of her height. She picked berries for hours, chopped firewood, and helped tend to the house and the animals, although the outside tasks were always her favorite, much to Oma's dismay. Doris held, also had a job as a crosswalk guard for many years, but her place has always been in the country. Doris enjoyed going for walks with Oma and the dogs. She loved watching wildlife and the birds. She would sit for hours drinking coffee and holding a cigarette while watching the fields and the hummingbird feeder. Oma and Doris would always talk in German and would often share their love for German magazines and tabloids. When Bill passed away, Doris and Uncle Billy took over the responsibilities of farm life and ensured the animals were fed, even at 30 below. She had strong connections with the animals, particularly Mama Sheep, for most of us formerly known as Lucky, 
At feeding time, Mama Sheep would go under the wire fence, walk to the house, and stare at Grandma through the window to remind her it was time to feed them. Mama Sheep would often help Grandma feed the other animals and would even join her on her walks up and down the driveway. In addition to the farm and parent life, Doris was a lover of stories. She shared her stories, but also encouraged us to create stories of our own, so long as we remember, don't do anything she wouldn't do, and if you do, make sure you tell her all about it. She loved hearing all the juicy gossip and was always excited to share any information she discovered. Doris was a woman of many, mer of many words, as most of us know. She loved, oh, sorry. She loved hearing all of the juicy gossip. She was a woman of many words. I recall her often asking, do you remember so-and-so? And getting frustrated when you did not remember John Smith and all of his children from 15 years ago that lived at the top of the hill. She also loved when neighbors visited the farm and she would offer coffee, sweets, and a lengthy conversation. I'm sure there were times the poor waterman did not make it all of his calls when the farm was first on the list. Every week without fail, Doris could be found inside Bill's News, picking her lottery numbers and picking up the German magazines that were set aside for her and Oma. And on special occasions, she would find herself in the casino. These hobbies also allowed her to talk to many friends and acquaintances in this Dawson Creek area. Doris loved spending time with her children and her grandchildren. One of our favorite memories is the fall fair, where she would eagerly join the grandkids in walking through Midway. Her favorite rides were the tilt-a-whirl and the bumper cars. Doris was often seen driving around the edges of the bumper cars because that way she got more driving time. She always had a childlike grin on her face when she drove, really any vehicle, to be honest. Despite barely being able to see over the steering wheel, she was known to be a little heavy on the pedal. She loved playing cards, crazy eights, kings in the corner, and of course, cribbage, which every kid and grandkid knew how to play from a young age, and for money too. We are all pretty mathematically inclined, at least up to 31. Even now, most of us, if we hear the word 15, we have to fight the urge to say for two. Her resilience and kindness were unmatched, and she was as stubborn as they come. Every year, each child and grandkid could expect $20 for the fall fair, Christmas, and birthdays, which never went forgotten. Grandma's selflessness continued throughout her life as she cared for Grandpa throughout his battle with cancer, as well as Oma as she began to age. Like both Oma and Grandpa, Grandma was able to remain on the farm for as long as possible with the support of Uncle Billy. As the Psalm 34:18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. While death is indeed a part of our fallen world, today is a celebration of the life Grandma lived, a life filled with love, memories, and the family she cherished so deeply. Our hearts may be broken, but I find solace in believing that her spirit has been embraced by something farther, far greater. At 78, she leaves behind not just memories and stories, but her family, which she loved more than anything. Doris had four children, six grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren, Everly and William. Let us not only mourn her passing, but celebrate her life, a life filled with stories, love, resilience, generosity, and family. May we hold dear the lessons she taught us and carry her memory forward in love and the laughter we share with each other. Thank you, Grandma, for every moment, every story, and every lesson. We will cherish you always. Unfortunately, one of the great-grandchildren could not be here today. And Tamea has sent in a photo, a video, that I'm going to play over the microphone for you all as she is deeply saddened by the fact that she was not able to come to the funeral and to be with us here today. Everyone who knew my grandma knew that she was equal parts loving and wild. She fed feral cats, gave tight hugs, and was the only grandma riding the bumper cars or the tilt-a-whirl at the county fair. Her eyes always had a sparkle in them when she told a joke or said something witty, which was often. Her laugh and mischievous smile will live forever in my memory as an example of who I hope to be. I'll miss you, grandma. I love you. Well done and well delivered. That was great. I always say family do the best job when it comes to eulogies. Now, Sarah, come on. He's coming. Okay. My mother. <laughs> Good job, William. Um, I just wanted to share some memories, too. And 
What would you like to say, William? You say, Oma? Oma. You say, I love you, tons, tons. <laughs> I wanted to share some memories as well. Um, I like to stick with the funny ones because Grandma always liked to tell funny stories and she was often a part of many funny stories. Um, as many of you know, she loved the casino. And so I remember we would take her to the casino and then as the slot machines got more and more sophisticated and they started to have more bonuses and different things, she didn't know how to work them as well, but of course was hard as hearing. So I'd be yelling at her in the casino trying to explain how the game worked. And so I remember people looking at us and thinking like, man, they must think we're abusing grandma and like forcing her to gamble, but she was very happy to be there. <laughs> It was one of her pl favorite places to be and her favorite things to do. Um, I know like she loved everybody and all the grandkids, and I think I'm probably one of the shortest grandkids. I think so. I'm one of the smallest ones. And so it was, it was cool being able to see, well, eye to eye with her, but also to see another small woman out on the farm chopping wood and doing all of these tasks. So, you know, a lot of people our size, they say that we can't do that kind of stuff. And I recall... One day somebody's, somebody's cows got out and they all came in, they were in the front field and my grandma was out there with her limp and a stick chasing the bulls out of the field. And I'm like, grandma, like, <laughs> get, back, get out, like, you can't just chase them with a stick. And then there was also a time when we had a cougar on the property and she also decided to chase that with a stick. <laughs> so she, I, I probably wouldn't have messed with her. She was, she was a tough lady and then as, as Ali said, she, we all learned how to play cards and uh, like playing crib, she would, um, <laughs> when you would put down a card, uh, like if you put down, you know, 21, she would, oh, why are you putting down 21? Because she would just steal all your points, steal all your points exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I played cards with her a lot when I was younger, and her and grandpa would always have banter while we were, while we were playing in the kitchen. But then when it came bedtime, my grandma would sit there for, probably like an hour just telling me various stories. Could I, I would always ask her, then one more story, one more story, and she never ran out of stories. And so I hope that none of, none of us ever will run out of stories and we'll continue to make our own stories and share them because that's how we're gonna keep her memory going.
Thank you. Such great tributes for your grandma. You guys, that's wonderful. Well, I smiled at the answer given me by the family when I asked the question, what were some of Doris's favorites? <clears throat> First was German cooking, <clears throat> pardon me, and I'm not going to say these right, but spetzla, stalin, and marzipan were all things that came up right away. Second, Doris liked game shows. The Price is Right and The Wheel of Fortune were big hits with Doris. But her all-time favorite TV show was The Beverly Hillbillies. That was wonderful to hear. I sure laughed when I heard that. She knew every one of the Beverly Hillbillies episodes and informed people when she'd seen them twice. They also shared that with me. But what made me smile the most about Doris's favorites was that she liked Wilf Carter. My grandma liked Wilf Carter, and I grew up listening to Wilf Carter. When all of my friends were listening to ACDC or whatever they listened to, I had to listen to Wilf Carter. So it was kind of special when I heard that, and I had a lot of fun looking at some Wilf Carter songs. Wilf Carter was known as the yodeling cowboy. Of course, he was Canadian, and he had a lot of country ballads and western theme songs. And of course, he sang Doris's favorite song. The family mentioned, You Are My Sunshine. That's one of his best songs. But I want to take a minute to read a few lyrics from another of his big hits. There's a bluebird on my windowsill. There's a bluebird on your windowsill. There's a rainbow in your sky. There are ha happy thoughts, your heart to fill near enough to make you cry. And with every tear you've washed away all the things you've kept inside, you count your joys this lovely day and you wonder why you cried. And if perchance your heart grows sad and you still can smile again, and with every tear you've ever had comes the sunshine after the rain. So I hope as we move into the slideshow and watch those photos that you can count your joy, as Wilf Carter sang and that you can let out some of those tears and look back and see how blessed you really were to be a part of this precious lady's family. So can we have the PowerPoint, please? Choice 
Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance <laughs> that was great, you guys. That was wonderful. Well, as I spent time working on Doris's service over the last couple of days, I kept looking at her picture on, the, on Rainer's website, and I couldn't help but smile every time I looked at it. I even pulled it up and said to my husband, look at this lady, just look at her. As you can see, she's smiling. Uh, in, the, in the website, she appears to be holding what is a Christmas mug, I think, and she just looks so inviting. And forgive me if I say it, so German. If you hadn't told me she was from Germany, I would have guessed it. It seemed so very obvious to me, anyway. My favorite thing, of course, to learn about her was her love of, ger of any German cooking and holiday time spent with family. So I wasn't surprised when preparing the service today that I learned that the municipality where Doris was from hosts a Dorfest. Really, my German's bad, I'm sorry. And that's a large village festival for family and friends and it's a Christmas market, and I have the actual German way to say that, but I'm not going to massacre that. And it's a street market held during the four weeks leading up to Christmas, the four weeks of Lent, very important church holiday. Christmas is a big deal in Germany. From decorating Christmas trees, building gingerbread houses and opening the door, to finding a treat in your advent calendar, you would be surprised to learn how many common traditions that we celebrate here originated in Germany. And don't forget the carols such as Away in a Manger, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, O Christmas Tree, aka O Tannenbaum, and Silent Night. All are German. But Germany has also given the world classical music. People like Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, and Brahms. And I'm sure that a lot of North Americans thank Germany for the tradition of Oktoberfest. And I think about the stars of German cuisine, bratwurst, 
sauerkraut, brat kartoffelin, and wiener schnitzel. Hey, I got them all. These are all obvious German traditions and exports that Canada has adopted and enjoyed. And dare I say, just like Doris. We have adopted her and you as a family have enjoyed her. There's a memorial poem that puts it this way. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace from someone who has made our world a brighter, better place. Doris definitely made you as a family and her friends your world's brighter and better places to be. Family, your mom has touched the lives of many people over the years, and she has left you a truckload of memories. I hope that you can review those memories on the difficult days ahead and find some comfort in knowing that she has lived a rich, full life and was a blessing to so many. And I, when I thought about her as being a, a little country lady, a little farm wife out there, I thought of this poem. And it says, when you remember, I hope that when you remember Doris, you don't think of her as passed away. Instead, remember the good times you had or the funny things she'd say. Remember her in springtime, how she loved the fragrant breeze. Remember her in summer as the sunshine kissed her cheeks. Remember her in autumn, how she loved the turning leaves. Remember her in winter, watching snowflakes drift in the breeze. Although Doris surely loved these things, remember she loved you all even more. Just think of her standing and waving goodbye as she goes back in the front porch door. I hope that that's the memory that you keep in your, in your heart of her. So let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Doris, and thank you for this wonderful family that she has raised. And, and Lord, thank you for their contribution today that brought honor and tribute to Doris. And, and just it is a tribute of what she meant to each of them. Lord, I ask that you would be with them in the days and weeks to come, that you would comfort them, that they would continue to pass on the traditions and, uh, and just the, the legacy that Doris left with them to another generation. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this family. We ask that you would bless the rest of our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you to please rise for Doris. Oh, Mazoli, oh, Mazonette, ach, wenn ich dich, meine Oma, nicht hätt, wär's auf der Welt so traurig und leer, denn eine Oma wie dich gibt's nie mehr. Ich hab die beste Oma, Die liebste von der Welt bei ihr, da darf ich alles, wie mir es grad gefällt. Und schimpft dann meine Mutti, ach du verwöhnst ihn noch, dann lächelt Oma zärtlich.